Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Uh, right, day 29 of the Warboss Day Painting Challenge. And I've got some exciting stuff to show you today. I've been very busy. Um, but first of all, I want to have a quick chat. So, uh, in comes my test model once again. Um, so, I've been using this model um, through the series. Um, the last time you saw it, um, it was for the washes. Um, on the tabard you see there I've got some um, like lines on the tabard. That's when I was testing highlighting the freehand, which in the end I didn't actually do. Um, but yes, uh, the next stage was the uh, grotesques and in particular painting the skin on the grotesque. I think we all knew it, you knew it, I knew it. Uh, the skin had to be painted. Uh, but what was holding me back was several things. Um, a, um, I thought that if I painted all of the skin on those grotesques, on those rat ogres, that there'd be too much skin and they wouldn't match into the army. Um, especially as a lot of the details aren't actually painted apart from that brownie colour. Um, and then to have this like massive amount of skin, I didn't think would work very well. Uh, and then the second reason was that it, I think it would be actually physically difficult to paint the skin because uh, there were some areas I just couldn't get the paintbrush into, you know, where they've been glued on the bases, the big arms are in the way. Um, and also there's, there's quite, it's quite tricky just to paint around all of the, the fur. There's, there's the, sometimes the skin sort of turns into spikes and stuff as well and it's just like a really awkward thing to paint. Um, so that's what I've been holding back on. Um, but I knew I had to paint skin. So, I had a chat with my very, very good buddy, Clayton, uh, 33 Clay Dog is his channel. The link is in the description below. You should definitely check it out. He's an awesome guy, uh, but more importantly, he's an amazing painter. Um, and he's been very, very kind and he's helped me out uh, once again. <laughs> um, so I went to Clayton, I explained my situation and he came up with a fantastic idea which just fits absolutely perfectly into what uh, my vision of these grotesques are. So I'm going to show you on my test model what he came up with. So just turn this around on the back. Okay, so what Clayton said, he said, well, why don't you highlight the skin uh, with the skin colour? Now, when he first said that, I just thought, what the, what, what were you talking about? And he explained it in more detail. Um, so the idea is that basically the skin colour is there, but it's sort of part of the original brownie colour. So it's sort of like a, um, like a change you know, so the skin is changing from their original colour into this brownie colour, which is great because um, that's the theme of the army, you know, where the cloth is that sort of colour. Um, and also like uh, the space marine helmets that are on the talus, for example, I've got those in those colours where the, the dark outer technologies changed the colour uh, from their all their experiments and stuff. So what I've got here is basically the skin colour on the model without having to paint the whole model in the skin colour um, and I've done it on the grotesque I'm just about to get them out to show you but I think it's absolutely fantastic I'm really really happy with the results um, and it was really simple to do which is great because obviously I am on a strict time scale here so all I did is um, I dry brushed some of the raised areas with my Celestra Grey my skin colour um, I then did a wash of the purple wash like I did on my normal skin colour and then went back over and I lightly dry brushed back over that uh, with the Celestra Grey. Exactly basically the colours that I used for the skin except obviously rather than painting it on it was all lightly dry brushed and that gives me that sort of translucent um, like change from the brown to the skin. Okay so ramble over let's get these grotesques out and uh, give you a closer look. Okay, here they are. Um, so yeah, I went uh, in on some of the raised areas. Um, I tried to do it random, especially where I had two models exactly the same. I tried to put the skin in different areas uh, the best that I could. So let's uh, zoom in and have a closer look. Just turn that guy around. Right, let's go over this side. So hopefully it will focus, there you go. Now, I am really, really happy with that. Um, 
I've got the skin cutter now on the models. Um, I've broken up the sort of the colour uh, because they, they were looking very unfinished before. Um, and I think I've um, I've succeeded in doing what I was trying to do, but not knowing what I was trying to do, <laughs> uh, which is just enlightened, like I said, by, by Clayton's uh, inspiration there. But I am really, really happy. Let me turn these around actually as well because the backs of them are pretty cool too. Look at that. So yeah, I like I said, I am really, really happy with these now. Um, I really hope you like them too. Um, like I said, I'm feeling that they are finished. Um, but, but, the fat lady does not sing until the end. And the end is not here. So, um, looking at this challenge then, a bit closer, I have two days left. Now I know I said I wanted to save one day for varnishing and one day for doing the, the tufts of grass. Um, well, let's face it, I can do those in a day. Um, so I was, I was being generous, I think, there. So I, as far as I'm concerned, I've actually got one more day of painting left. Um, and um, there's something which I want to do extra on these grotesques. Um, and that is I want to add some more bone color. Now the reason for that is I've added some more bone colour on my other models, on the witches and the warriors, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, I came up with the idea that the tabards need paint on them, because the tabards were also looking pretty bland, um, especially on those warriors. So um, what I've done is I've painted the, the tabards, but I've painted them without painting them. <laughs> I'll explain for you, to you in a second. I'm just going to put this board away and then I'll get the next board out for you. Okay, so this is the Warriors. Um, and uh, let me zoom in, show you what I've done. So let's go straight into the tabards. I think you can see them straight away. Um, yeah, I painted the what I'm calling the sticks. Uh, the bone colour. Now these are only base coated, so I've still got to wash and highlight them. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, the tabards seemed really, really plain and bland, and I thought that painting those little sticks would really, really finish the tabards off, but if, but without actually painting the tabards. And the reason I don't want to paint the tabards is because um, they're cloth, and if I start painting them, let's just say I went in, I painted them green, um, I then have to paint all of the cloth green because that's how I like to roll. I like to have everything the same. Um, and that means that my special characters, which would have cloaks and stuff on, would have to have green cloaks. And that's not the, the look that I wanted. And I thought this was an ideal solution. Now, the other thing, which you may, may or may not be able to see here, let me just uh, change the angle. Right, here we go. The other thing, as it focuses in, is the hair. Um, I was feeling the hair wasn't popping as much as I would like it to. Um, so I've solved that by painting the little sticks, as I'm calling them, in the hair, um, in that bone colour once again. So now I've got those uh, sticks painted, I think it really helps that green pop. Uh, rather than having that brown colour, it's all sort of, because there's brown on the hair as well, with the, the brown stippling. Um, and I think the hair was getting lost with the stick and everything. So now the stick's painted, um, I think that's, that really, really helps. And again, that's just base coated, I haven't washed or highlighted them. But I have painted the sticks on all of the tabards and all of the hair on that warrior board. And uh, I'm going to get the other board out as well, because I've also painted the little sticks on the witches as well. Okay, so this is the witches. Um, just zoom in, and uh, so you can just quickly see that. Um, yeah, I've also painted the little sticks in the hair, and I think that really does make a difference to these girls here. So really, really happy with that decision. It was a last-minute decision. Um, I always knew the hair wasn't quite right. I uh, couldn't put my finger on it, but. Um, Things like anything, until you can start to see all the final results, it is difficult to make those sort of calls um, at the beginning uh, before you've got all of the paint down. But um, I'm really, really happy with that uh, decision. Okay, so quickly, let's get back to the rat ogres. 
Right, on the rat ogres then, just to finish them off and to match them in with my theme um, on those other two boards, um, I'm going to go in with some more bone colour. Um, now some of the tabards have a little symbol on, um, just like that one, so I'm going to paint that symbol bone colour. Uh, now some of them sadly don't have the symbol on, um, which has been a bit of a problem with these models where there's so no consistency between them, where they're different sculpts. Um, so for example that one doesn't have anything, but um, what I've decided to do, I'm going to paint that little rope going around his, his body there um, in the bone colour. So basically now I'm going to add um, somewhere, somehow, a bit of bone colour to that middle section of each and every one of those rat ogres and um, I think that will finish them off nicely. I think it will match in with the other, the other units as well, um, like I've just shown you. So, uh, that's my plan. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to put the bone cutter on those rat ogres like I've just explained. I'm going to wash all of the bone cutter that I've laid down today. Um, and then I'm going to highlight all of the bone cutter. Um, and then the army will be finished apart from varnishing and doing the uh, tufts of grass. Okay, so uh, let's get on to the daily question. Daily question number 29. The Closet of Purgatory 4. For the last time, share an impulse buy that you haven't used as much as you'd like to. Now take all of your Closet of Purgatory items and choose at least one and commit yourself to painting or, or playing it by next year's project. Okay, so uh, you probably know this anyway, but I'm going to pick those warp spiders uh, because the warp spiders are definitely going to be part of my Get It Painted Challenge, uh, which will be coming up in the autumn sometime. Uh, so I'm going to get those painted this year. So um, that is going to be uh, my uh, Purgatory Awakens project. Right, okay, so we've got one last thing to do in this video. It's a bit of a long one, sorry about that. Um, okay, so we are on to the weekly Oath of Moments. Um, so we are down here now. Uh, so by the end of day 29, I want to do the freehand, the bases and the details, which I've pretty much done. Um, as I said, I've just done that little extra bit, um, which I'm going to finish tomorrow. So uh, yeah, day 29. So let's do my Oath of Moment. On this paintbrush, I make my Oath of Moment. By the end of day 31, I will complete my project. My achievements will live on, and the great deeds I have accomplished here shall be beacon to all future generations. Let all who hear me remember my name and my work. Glory to the painters, and glory forever to those who stand with me. Okay, so yeah, basically... Um, I am going to finish this army. Um, I think there's no no doubt about it. A um, few more hours to go, but um, certainly nothing impossible. Okay, so that is it for this video. Uh, please check back tomorrow. Um, check out the bone cutter, see how I get on with that, and uh, see what other questions there are to be answered. Thanks for watching.